Question, if your God is all good and merciful, why does he allow suffering and affliction on earth? Such is the question that is asserted by certain people today. For a person who believes in the Creator, a believer in Allah, God, and the hereafter, this is not a difficult question. The believer knows where he came from, where he will be going, and he knows that this life is temporary, a stepping stone for the real and actual life, the eternal abode. With that said, each day that passes, how many lives are lost suddenly? How many people suffer with a new affliction? How many people have lost their property and loved ones at the hands of aggression and crime? Such is the reality of this world. Tests, tribulations, corruption. An atheist cannot make sense out of any of this. As for a Muslim, one who submits his or her will to the one true God, he must learn the correct aqidah, belief, in regard to these trials and afflictions. And for this purpose, we will go to Surat Yunus, ayah number 107, where Allah says, وَإِن يَمْسَسْكَ اللَّهُ بِضُرٍ فَلَا كَاشِفَ لَهُ إِلَّا هُوَ وَإِن يُرِدَكَ بِخَيْرٍ فَلَا رَادَّ لِفَضْلِ يُصِيبُ بِهِ مَنْ يَشَاءُ مِنْ عِبَادِهِ وَهُوَ الْغَفُورُ الرَّحِيمُ and if Allah should touch you with adversity, there is no remover of it except Him. And if He intends for you good, there is no repeller of His bounty. He causes it to reach whom He wills of His servants, and He is the forgiving, the merciful. Ibn Uthaymeen rahimahullah, says in his tafsir of this ayah, in his sharh of Kitab al-Tawheed, Al-Mas, touch, is from the actions of Allah but the adversity is from the impacts of the said action. Allah does not intend adversity for its own sake. Rather, He intends it for another purpose due to the good that it leads to, and due to the vast wisdom the occurrence of adversity contains. As for good, it is what Allah intends for its own sake. Thus, if a person is afflicted with an illness, Allah did not intend for him harm. Instead, He intended to decree the illness, and that is what harms him. But he did not intend the harm itself. Rather, he intended the goodness which the illness contains. For example, illness can revitalize the entire body and serve as a natural detox. Also, being sick will allow you to appreciate good health because we can only truly appreciate something after experiencing the opposite. And also, it will be a reminder for you and others of our weakness and our need for our Lord, among many other benefits. Ibn Uthameen continues, Thus, the afflictions and suffering we see from others and experience ourselves are not something Allah intends for its own sake. Rather, Allah intends good with such things, even though we may see it as bad. He mentions elsewhere, It is like the example of a doctor who, when treating his or her patient, may cause pain to his patient, but he intends good. And that is the end of the interpretation of Ibn Uthameen, rahimahullah. The reality is, if you take this world as your first and only abode, and you assume there will be no afterlife, then aspects of suffering and trouble will never make sense to you. If you spend your life disabled or ill, or you lose a loved one suddenly, this should move you closer to finding your purpose and closer to your Creator, not further away. It should show you how worthless this life is. One moment, you are living your life in the pursuit of your dreams, and the next, you get killed in an accident. But is that it? Is there nothing else to come? No accountability? Good people won't be rewarded? Evil people won't be punished? One thing we must understand is, this sort of question about why God allows trials and harm to exist, its root is atheism, the rejection of Allah, God. While deep down they know there is a higher being in charge of their affairs, World of possible, or you said that we have to claim that we're living in a world of possible existences. Do you, do you agree that there could be an? Uh, that no, could be, nobody's claimed that. Do you accept that there, could, there is an, an, an answer existence? I would say that th yes. Then that's God. That's but that it. doesn't have to be uh, God. Over, thank you it very does much. Not, no, that does not have to be God. They cannot make sense out of this because they do not believe in the hereafter. They don't believe that this world is a stepping stone for a lasting eternal life. 
They reject the idea of an afterlife altogether. So this, along with other issues, will never make sense for them. For many people, death is a faraway idea that is never given thought or consideration. But death is the sure reality. For a believer in Allah in the last day, they know that this life is not to be taken as an eternal abode. They will not invest all their hopes, wishes, and struggles into something that is temporary. They have an eternal life to prepare for. They know that suffering, harm, pain, and trouble exist for a wisdom. It is so we can enter paradise, to expiate our sins, to remind us when we are heedless, and for others to be reminded and give thanks. Regarding this, the Prophet of Allah, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, said, On the day of resurrection, when people who had suffered affliction are given their reward, those who were healthy will wish their skins had been cut to pieces with scissors when they were in the world. Narrated by a Tirmidhi. The Messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, may peace be upon him, also said, how wonderful is the affair of the believer, for his affairs are all good. And this applies to no one but the believer. If something good happens to him, he is thankful for it, and that is good for him. If something bad happens to him, he bears it with patience, and that is good for him. Narrated by Muslim. Thus, the entire issue revolves around believing in an afterlife, an eternal resting place. If one rejects that, the reality of this world, including why we even die, will never make sense.